The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. Uh, you already have clothes on, and I don't have a motorcycle. But I have the brand new Beetlebone AI. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and today we're exploring the Beetlebone AI. People say you should think of AI more like Toaster, less like Terminator. I'm not so sure about that. Let's build a fun project with the Beetlebone AI. Today we are building a robot skull. Think of Terminator under the skin. Not an exact replica, but you get the idea. It's powered by the Beetlebone AI, a brand new platform. And because I know you like to see me do experimental stuff, I try to interface the Beetlebone AI with USB devices and what else I can see. I also want to use not only the main ARM core, but also the PRU core and maybe the EVE or DSP modules. Let's see what we can rig up. Of course, first I have to get familiar with the Beetlebone AI. If you want to see a full getting started blog and video, it is linked below. I'm already familiar with the Cloud9 IDE, so I hook up this board, open my browser and navigate to my Cloud9 interface and look at some examples over there to get familiar, get a feel for how this board behaves and what I can do with it. When you boot up the Beaglebone AI for the first time, you will notice that it runs pretty hot. You need to do some updates. Those are all documented in the Getting Started Guide and also in my road test review linked below. You need to supply sufficient cooling for this board. I have made my own BBAI cooler add-on board. It's also linked down below. You can get that directly from Isla as a bare PCB and solder the components you want onto there. There's also a recommended fan linked below. Those work great, already tried that out. Solves the problem and it's nearly silent. So that fan is actually a quite silent one. There is also a blog about all these heating requirements and also about this add-on board. If you have ideas or if you would like to request some features that should be incorporated in the board, post them on element14.com forward slash community. I have this anatomically correct prop for education lying around. It's a skull, a human skull in plastic. And I wanted to use that for some Halloween projects possibly, but never came around to do it. So today is the day this thing gets a use. And I have to figure out first how much weight in electronics I can put inside that skull. I want it to be as self-contained as possible. Maybe just have one or two wires for power protruding from the skull. So I need to figure out a mechanical construction to move the skull around in a few dimensions and also move the jaw. And then I know how much weight I can pack into that. So let's start with the mechanical design. I do that in Fusion 360. I have designed a neck for my skull. I didn't bother to build the skull in Fusion 360. I just took some measurements and that's where I started. Uh, the skull moves in two directions in the X and Y axis. So it can nick and it also can move its yaw axis from side to side. And also the jaw is activated. I have not implemented a tilting from side to side for a very simple reason. First, it's not easy to do when you have a few axes already built. But the other reason is that I want to use a webcam to do image recognition, maybe some face detection. And if you tilt the camera side to side, usually that makes it much more hard. So 
I avoid that axis to have it easier on the code side of things when I use OpenCV to detect some faces. The construction has some 3D printed parts and some laser cut parts. I always try to make big parts suitable for laser cutting because that is much faster than 3D printing big plates. And I also try to use 3D printing whenever it is really beneficial to the design. So if I would construct all of these pieces, surely only for laser cutting it would take longer than in the combinational method and of course it would take longer if everything was 3D printed. So combining different types of manufacturing is always a good idea. When I assembled all these pieces and had it move for the first times with the skull mounted onto it, I noticed that the servo that does the nick movement is barely capable of moving the head. So to support it, I use some springs that keep it in a center position, two at the back, one at the front, so the servo doesn't have to apply it as much force. Keep in mind that we will put a lot of electronics inside the skull so it will get even heavier. I need to support it from the get-go to know that will work even with a little bit of weight in it. I like to construct things one thing at a time, so I construct it, laser cut it or 3D print it, try out if it works and then go from there and do the next thing that comes in line. So first the nick, then the yaw, then the jaw movement and in the end I made a mounting plate. I used completely standard Metal Gear servos. In hindsight it may have been better to upgrade to some 25 to 40 kilo servos that I usually use for RC crawlers but those are more expensive and I wanted to use up those servos. There are three things that I want the BeagleBone to interact with. The Arduino Nano for servo controls, a webcam for image recognition and I also want to have some audio output. My initial plan was to do as much on the BeagleBone AI as possible to save on weight and to benefit from all the different cores this unit provides. But here's the catch, the BeagleBone AI is a very, very new platform and of filming of this video, it is just released a few days ago. This may have changed when you see this video, but I only got to get the PRUs talking to the outside. So the GPIOs are only working with PRUs for the moment. I couldn't get it to work with uh, Python or C. So I need to do a workaround, but this gives me the opportunity to experiment with interfacing it with other devices. And if you need real-time servo control, of course, Arduino is my favorite platform. So I attach an Arduino Nano to the BeagleBone AI with another cape, and I will make, uh, make them talk over the USB port, because that's something that I know will work, because I already got it to talk to a webcam. The BeagleBone AI only has one USB port. I'm sure there is a much more elegant solution, but I hacked up a USB hub to connect my webcam and the Arduino Nano directly to that USB hub and use the regular plug to plug it into the BeagleBone AI. Because the server motors can draw a lot of power, I want to separate their power supply from the BeagleBone AI. I also power the Arduino Nano and the webcam over an external power source on my proto board that I soldered up as an add-on board to the BeagleBone AI. I want to use the original USB mini header of the Arduino Nano to program it, but I also want to separate the power and data lines that go to the BeagleBone AI. So what I needed to do was do a little operation. I soldered very thin wires to the USB peripheral chip on the Arduino Nano on the underside of the board and interfaced those directly with the data lines of the USB hub. Keep in mind that you are not allowed to talk to the Arduino Nano with the BeagleBone AI and another PC at the same time. This will not break it, but it won't work. My first intention was to use eSpeak or any other voice synthesizer to run in Python on the BeagleBone AI and output its voice lines over a USB device, like an external USB sound card. I tinkered with that for a while. I couldn't get it to choose the USB card as its primary audio device. At first it always wanted to go straight to HDMI. When I deactivated all the HDMI components with the help of the Element 14 community, 
I got it to recognize the USB card. I got it to probe everything correctly. So Elsa Mixer says everything works fine. But when I try to output, it always throws a lot of errors. So what's our solution for the audio problem? What's our workaround? The obvious thing would be to hack up an HDMI cable, pull out the audio from the usual HDMI line and put that into an amplifier and try to get it working that way. Yeah, possibly, but that's not the way I like to do it. First, because that's already been done. And I also want to get to know about how to interface programs running on the BeagleBone AI with external hardware that's completely independent. So what I use is an MP3 player module called DF Player, linked also down below if you want to tinker around with that. And I also want to use real voice clips and not a synthesis speech. So I try to impersonate some Terminator quotes and record them, put them on an SD card, and then my program should trigger these voice clips when they are appropriate. I know that you can share some memory between the PRUs and the main cores and put data in between them, but as I stumbled through the tutorials, I figured out mm, that's above my skill set and I need to get this project done in time. So I did another solution. I use my image detection script in Python to trigger an event and send that over to the Arduino. The Arduino then triggers the DF player module and that does its thing. I opted for a very simple solution, just two wires and power ground. That is enough for this project. And I can only trigger these with a relay because the DF player uh, expects a button to be pushed. So ground and another signal should be connected for some time, it also registers longer and shorter button pushes. And you can just pull uh, that pin low, that won't work. But a relay works perfectly. Come with me if you want to leave. And I have also from DF Robot these uh, gravity modules laying around, a microphone and also a relay module. So that would work perfectly. Why do we need a microphone? Yeah, that's the thing. We want to have the jaw move when the voice is played. So to trigger a jaw movement, the easiest way to simulate speaking is to use the amplitude of the signal. I did that before by measuring the analog voltage at a point before the amplifier. But that gave me mixed results. Much better in practice worked just having a microphone and pulling that microphone data into your sketch and move the jaw according to the levels mapped to servo values. If you don't want to detect faces but objects, you can replace the Python script with the classification.tidl example from the Cloud9 examples. Let's assemble all the components, flash the code, and let's make this robot skull talk. Come on, detect me. I need your clothes, your boots and your motorcycle. <laughs> what are you looking at? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> this one is terrifying. I need your clothes, your boots and your motorcycle. I'll be back. I'm a cybernetic organism, living tissue over metal endoskeleton. I need your clothes, your boots and your motorcycle. I'm a cybernetic organism, living tissue over metal endoskeleton. I need your clothes, your boots and your motorcycle. What are you looking at? I'll be back. As always, you can download all the files, all the code for this project on element14.com forward slash presents for free. And yes, I've also included the voice samples where I badly reenacted some Terminator quotes. Building this robot head was a lot of fun, but I had to go way beyond my comfort zone. I'm not an experienced programmer or embedded developer, so that was pretty difficult for me. 
BeagleBone is an open platform, so a lot of people are contributing and working actively on the development of this platform at the moment. So when you see this video, they may have been a lot of libraries or device tree overlays published that would make these things easier. I had to do some workarounds and it's always good to know workarounds and how you can solve problems that you didn't expect. So that problem taught me a lot about that. Controlling the robotic skull with the BeagleBone AI was the main focus of this project. But of course you can also control it over a serial terminal, make it do its voice lines and also move around. If I would do this project again, I would try to wait until a lot of people have contributed to such open projects so I would get an easier life to fulfill this project. But at the same time, having a brand new platform, exploring it on my own and trying to go beyond my comfort zone is also very fun and entertaining and I think I get more gain in my knowledge and my skills if I do it that way. If you have any ideas for animatronic projects, artificial intelligence or what else, tell us on the Element14 community at element14.com forward slash presents. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.